I had a setback. I went to the nightclub one night. The club owner said, I want to talk to you after the night show. I told the guys in the band they want to talk. We've been selling out for six months. We got standing room only audiences. We finally going to get our raise. I walked in his office that night. He said, you were great. I said, thank you. People loved you. I said, thank you. We made a lot of money since you've been here. I said, yes. He said, that's why it's hard for me to tell you what I got to tell you. Now that we made a lot of money, the owners of the club have decided they got to get a better return on investment. And the only way to do that with a full nightclub is to lower the cost. And the band's the biggest cost. We're going to try something new going around the country. We bought a karaoke machine. I said, but what about my, 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 my bills? I learned that night nobody care about your bills, but you and the people you owe. Am I right about it? I went home and told my bride, I said, I got to do something else. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was devastated. But a friend of mine gave me a cassette motivational tape. How many of y'all remember cassette tapes? Gave me a cassette tape. And on that tape was a speaker who said, in five years, you'll be the same person you are today except for two things. The people you meet who inspire you and the books you read that empower you. Really? There's people who meet and inspire me? And the books I read? And that friend gave me one more thing. He gave me a book called Think and Grow Rich. How many of you read Think and Grow Rich? How many of you have never read Think and Grow Rich? Think and Grow Rich is a book that has made more millionaires than any other book other than the Bible. That was the first book I ever read from cover to cover. And as a result of that thinking, changing my thinking, I took a job with the Washington, D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator, talking to little kids about staying away from drugs. For the little kids, I started speaking to the bigger kids. And from the bigger kids, I started speaking to the teachers and the teachers associations. And one day I was speaking to a small group of teachers in a little room, and down the hallway in the big ballroom that night, they were going to have a big motivational rally. And while I'm speaking to these group of 12 or 15 teachers. One of the speakers from that night's rally was walking by my little, my little meeting room. The doorway was open, and he stood outside and listened to my message. When I finished speaking, he came in, and, his, and by the way, his name was Les Brown, the great motivator. He came in and said, young man, you got quite a talent. I'm putting together a tour. You'd be the perfect opening act. Are you interested? I said, I think so. And a few months later, we kicked off the Les Brown Music and Motivation Dream Team which tour, which featured Les Brown, Billy Preston, Gladys Knight, and a little guy from Washington, D.C., me.